It's mailbag time here on Chicago Bears Now. I'm your host, Harrison Graham. Give me a follow on Twitter. I'm at HGram NFL. More Bears updates, NFL thoughts, news, and rumors as well. If you don't catch it on this channel, maybe you'll catch it on my Twitter feed. Okay, let's start with a super chat from John Wharton. Appreciate the two bucks. How about signing Kyle Long? If you're watching live, we will uh, discuss this in further detail during our rumors and news section. Uh, Quick sneak peek, Kyle Long has announced he will uh, return to the NFL. But remember, things ended kind of poorly between the two parties. There were some injuries, and uh, he's kind of publicly assassinated Matt Nagy and this coaching staff since retiring. So uh, I'll give it about a half a smoking J on that one. B. Ryan Gaming, what are we doing with Cordero Patterson? Oh, another key free agent the Bears got to make a decision on. I think uh, – He's a good culture guy. I would like to bring him back. He showed some value as a rotation running back last year. He's one of the premier kickoff return specialists in the NFL. Has some Swiss Army value, Swiss Army knife value as a receiver also. Like to bring him back. Going to depend on price at the end of the day. Sam Ortiz with the super. I feel their plan is to tag Robinson, try to sweeten the deal for Russell or other QBs, and give Allen Robinson a reason to not be pissed over the tag. I explored that option that, hey, we're going to tag you, and if we get the right quarterback in here, then we will uh, revisit a long-term extension. I think it's possible. I don't think that's a great way of doing business <laughs> if you are the Chicago Bears or any NFL team. But, uh, you know, they got to they gotta see where they're at with the cap and all of that stuff as well. A lot of, con a lot of considering there, but the preferred outcome would have just been signing them to a long-term deal six months ago. But uh, that obviously did not happen. What's your favorite holiday? Let's hear it from you guys in the comments. Easter's around the corner. We just had Christmas a couple of months ago. I want to hear it from you. What is your favorite holiday? And maybe it's St. Patty's Day, especially for you uh, drinking folks out there. Chatsports.com slash Bears Green. We got some Bears-themed St. Patty's gear available at that link you see on screen. We'll put it in the comments. We'll put it in the description. These shirts, especially this like uh, gray with the, with the green sleeves, they're selling like hotcakes right now. The holiday is coming up quick. Chatsports.com slash Bears Green. Don't get pinched on St. Patty's Day like I have in the past because I don't have a lot of green gear in my repertoire, which is why I went to that link and uh, bought some stuff. Chatsports.com slash Bears Green. Take advantage at that link in the comments and in the description. And if you buy a shirt this year, that just means you have one for next year as well. John Elia, another super chat. Appreciate you. If no Russell Wilson or Deshaun Watson trade, uh, how about uh, trading AR, Allen Robinson, drafting Rashad Bateman and an offensive tackle in round one? If you want to commit to a rebuild, that's not a bad option. The problem is you can't really commit to a rebuild as long as Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy are here. Once George McCaskey decided to keep both those guys in place, a rebuild was never going to happen in 2021 because they're on the hot seat. They have to win this year. So if you're Pace and Nagy and you're constructing this roster, you can't approach it from a, oh, we got three years to rebuild. No, you don't. You got to win this year. I, I think this, this combination – has to at least win a playoff game this year to return in 2022. And uh, you're not doing that if you trade AR and don't land a big-time quarterback and start a rebuild. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's likely. But it's not the worst plan if you could rebuild. Caleb Cornell, what are the odds of re-signing Mitch Trubisky? I'll give it 5%. It's not zero, but uh, there have been reports saying that neither side is interested in a reunion. But what's true today may not be true tomorrow. And if the Bears swing and miss on five, six, seven quarterbacks, maybe that's a possibility. But I, half a smoking jay. It's very, very low. Luke Michael, should the Bears go get Kenny Galladay since the Lions didn't tag him? Uh, we've talked about this a little bit. You, you can only bring in Kenny Galladay if Allen Robinson is gone. So – you could tag and trade Robinson, which Robinson's been tagged, try and get a first-round pick, go sign Galladay to replace Robinson, and then draft or trade for a quarterback. But that seems like a lot of maneuvering when you could just keep Allen Robinson, right? So, uh, And let's be clear, you can't afford both. There's no scenario where you can afford Allen Robinson and Kenny Galladay, uh, so keep that in mind. Pick a receiver. Who would you rather have? They're the same age, by the way, for those of you wondering. Type AR for Allen Robinson. Type KG for Kenny Galladay. I'm taking the guy who's done more on the field with less and doesn't have 
a recent injury history like Galladay, I'm going to go ahead and type AR. Zachary Hawley, Nancy Pelosi wants to play quarterback in the NFL. Appreciate the super chat, but uh, I don't really get what you're trying to do there. Devo Miller, trade Allen Robinson to the Jets for the 23rd overall pick. Sam Darnold, their sec the second pick this year and next year, maybe second round pick. Surely you don't mean number two overall. Uh, is it even enough to get back for Robinson? Use assets for Wilson or Watson, trade Austin awesome Moore, blah, blah, blah. A lot of mo moving around. To me, how are you selling Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson on a trade without Allen Robinson? That's the dilemma you've got there. So I, I see what you're trying to do there, but I, I just don't think a guy like D. Watt or Russell Wilson is going to look at this scenario and be like, yeah, I can't wait to throw to Jimmy Graham. Like, uh, it's just not that appealing. I love Darnell Mooney, but he's not ready to be a number one. Pick a quarterback. These are the two that we continue to talk about. R-Dub for Russell Wilson, D-Dub for Deshaun Watson. Let's hear it from you guys in the comments. Which quarterback would you rather have that – could be seemingly available this offseason. RW for Russell Wilson, DW for Deshaun Watson. Subscribe to Chicago Bears now while you get your votes in because, hey, we only go live for these mailbags on Tuesday afternoon at 4 o'clock Eastern, usually 1 o'clock Pacific time. Get subscribed for the latest news, rumors, and these mailbags. You don't want to miss any of them, so hit that big red button and share that link with a friend. It's youtube.com slash bears now. We have a lot of fun, and we break down the latest surrounding the Bears. Tyler Saldina, Montgomery and Mack, plus two first-rounders for – Russell Wilson, uh, Pete Carroll salivating at David Montgomery. I'll tell you that. He loves himself some running backs. Uh, doesn't look like Chris Carson's going to be back, so they could use a starter. I mean, I would do that. <laughs> I love David Montgomery and Khalil Mack, but two first plus those two guys for Russell Wilson, sign me up. I'll, I'll figure out running back later. And, yeah, your defense might suffer if you get a franchise quarterback. But you know what? The, the improvement on offense will outweigh the slight uh, detriment on defense. Eric Rollins-Williams, appreciate the super. If we don't trade for Wilson or Watson, how long do you think it will take them to fire pace and or Nagy? They're not going to fire him before the season just because they don't land Wilson or Watson, so let's be clear on that. It's not like uh, McCaskey and Ted Phillips were like, all right, you're back this year, but if Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson aren't in a Bears uniform before week one, you're fired. That's, that's just not how teams operate. Uh, they'll see how the start of the season goes, and if the Bears are winning, they'll still have a job, and if they're losing, uh, they could lose their job. That's how this works. It's a results-driven business. Follow me on Twitter at HGramNFL for more NFL updates and Bears information as well. I'm trying to get to 2,000 followers ASAP, so if you want to help me out, just give me a follow at HGramNFL. And when I'm not live doing a show or uh, just doing any video for you guys here on the channel, I'm probably giving out some kind of Bears information or takes over there, so go check that out at HGramNFL. Montana for life. Okay. Can you please stop saying AR? Everybody wants to pay AR. The, que the question is, pay AR what? How much do you want to pay him? You have never specified that. Please do. Actually, I have specified it numerous times. Uh, if, if you just joined us live, we talked about it during the Allen Robinson video that I think Allen Robinson's worth Amari Cooper money. Roughly $20, $21 million per year. We'll take a look at the five highest paid receivers here. I've made it clear. He's not worth DeAndre Hopkins' money. He's an outlier. Uh, you could talk me into Julio at 22. I think that's a little rich for him, but Cooper got five years and 100 million with 60 guaranteed. I think that's a perfect contract for Allen Robinson. He dismissed the idea that uh, him and his agent have uh, demanded 25 million per year. He said that is fake news. He deserves Amari Cooper money. Maybe a tick more because you know Cooper got paid a year ago, and you know the slight inflation there. Maybe 21 million per year instead of 20. But at the end of the day, that's not a big difference there. Not saying he's DeAndre money, but 21, 20? Yeah, I mean, that, that's what he deserves. And I've said that numerous times, and then you would know that if you were subscribed. Your friend, hashtag Bears, if A-Rob doesn't come back somehow, what receiver do we target next? I mean, I do think Kenny Galladay is probably a natural first target, right? Especially if you have quarterback figured out. If not, receiver becomes a real option in round one at number 20. Rashad Bateman, Terrace Marshall, someone like that. Uh, Want to keep AR, but... I will at least concede there are some options out there. 
Devo Miller, appreciate that super chat. What receiver would you be happy with if the Bears drafted one? Who would be a dark horse quarterback that the Bears could get? <sighs> dark horse quarterback. Trey Lance, I'll throw him in as a dark horse. Maybe he slides a bit. Bears move up to get him. Um, as far as receiver, I, I think realistic guy, I, I like Rashad Bateman a lot. I think he's a his comp is actually not far off from Robinson. Big body, uh, wins on the outside. Not the fastest guy in the world, but uh, high points the football well. I think uh, he's a player I'd be very, very interested in.